Is that it? Alright, alright. That wasn't so bad. This episode, you know, didn't have a lot of building up to do. It was just a lot of uh, escalation going on, so... Yeah, alright. We're getting somewhere. Sure. Alright, let's get back to the game. Security was tight at the Monarch Gala. You took quite a risk walking into the lion's den. If we were going to kidnap Dr. Amaral, then we needed to do it from the inside. Beth Wilder. You were quick to trust her. We had common interests. Is that all you had? That's all we needed. Thanks for showing up. Here, I thought this was going to be a rescue. Okay, there's a story here. You know a guy called Hatch? Serene's right-hand man. He was here. He gave me this big speech about how he wants to take down Paul. I hope you said no. I didn't trust him for a second. He set me loose anyways, told me to wait for an opening. I just gave you one. Appreciate it. What's it look like right, out there? Let's get the show on the road. Everyone's concentrating on the party. So far, your crazy plan's working. And Dr. Emeril? I don't have a fix on her. She's either at the party or at her office at the R&D facility here on the island. I'll scout out the party. So you're gonna sip champagne while I break into a high-security installation. It's like you got this all figured out. I'll save you a cocktail, Weenie. Oh, well, in that case... My cover isn't going to survive the night, but it'll last a little longer, so you can't walk out the front door with me. This is the quickest way to the R&D facility. All right. I disabled the security at the back door, but there'll be guards. Contact me when you're clear. Yep. And Jack. Yeah. You know what's at stake here. This can't be about revenge. I'm not here for Paul. Hey, oh, he's escaping. What? No, I'm not. I'm just out on a stroll. Uh, oh. I'm just looking for the bathroom. I still have my stuff. Going. Okay. I was learning to control them better. That felt good. Uh, well, yeah, fuck it. Whatever. Just keep this around. All right. What's this? One on and Hey! God damn it! Who the hell designed these doors? Asshole. Okay, I'm gonna have to move faster to get through. Thank you. Alright. Uh, upgrades. Can we upgrade this new thing? Time stop. We got one point. Increased strength. Durability increase. Allowing more bullets to be stacked on it before it... Oh, no. That's different. No, it's not time stop. It's time rush. Time rush. Uh, increase focus. Focus time. Trigger but oh, well last lo what? We can do focus time with time rush. Just saying. Oh, it's another mural. Oh. Very sci-fi and very monarch. Something tells me it wasn't commissioned by them, though. What you say? 
Hey Beth, I'm clear. What's next? We'll National Park Service. What the fuck is this? What am I looking at here? Interesting. Light machine gun. <sighs> Will it do more damage though? I mean, I don't know. This is kind of risky. I don't want to leave the carbine behind. Up you go. Do I want to leave the carbine behind? Try this again. This is a big risk because if this if if this LMG turns out to be pretty sucky, then when's the next time I'm gonna get a carbine rifle? You know, but you know what? It's a chance that I'm willing to take. Let's do it. Oh, what? Can't do it from here? Says who? Alright, do it from here then. All right. There we go. Take the blame for the mess he made. <laughs> right, guys. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hello. Time felt broken here. Okay. That's it? Time felt broken here. Thank you. Gull Island sign. Riverport Coastal Defenses. The Coastal Defense Installation of... Felt unstuck in time. <sighs> the Coastal Defense Installation of Riverport was commissioned on August 2nd, 1940 and completed in September 1942 as America faced the realities of World War II. In addition to the fortifications and artillery, it also boasted an extensive tunnel system that linked Gull Island to the mainland, enabling free movement of personnel and material even under siege conditions. It was built in preparation for an attack on the United States that, fortunately, never came. The original plan also called for the construction of a large naval base in Riverport to support the U.S. Navy in the Atlantic, taking advantage of the local shipbuilding industry, but as the United States centered World War II out to Pearl Harbor, a change in resourcing priorities led to those plans being scrapped. This installation was in active use throughout the war, and the underground facilities continued to be used as a base for Navy intelligence work once World War II ended. The installation was decommissioned in 1961. There we go. Thank you. Thanks for constantly interrupting me, Jack. Appreciate that. Uh, oh. What? There's something up here?
no, it can't be back here. It's gotta be, oh, oops. It's gotta be... Where else, where else could it be? Alright, fuck it. Okay. Where is it? It's up up there somehow somewhere? Can we jump up there? Doesn't look like it. How are we supposed to do this? Can't jump up there. What? You have time rush for a t uh, okay. I've been thinking. What? Monarch projections say these stutters are getting more frequent. <sighs> Sucks. You'll be frozen. Yeah, I know. It's a risk. Monarch specialist troopers have the stutter proof gear. I bet Dr. Emerald would have that in her office too. I'll keep an eye out. See if I grab it for you. The timeline of the old cannon felt loose. I could shift it around. Locked. Oh, now we can smart place to aim the cannon, guys. Climb up here. Oh, okay. Okay. Now where is it? Oh. Oh, okay. Across. Around. Round and about. Mm hmm There we go, thank you. Increase focus. Okay, so what are we doing here? Something about the placement of the can- Oh, we can climb on top of the cannon itself? Oh, okay. I see. Interesting. There we are. Hey. There we go. Excuse me. Can't believe that Joyce can escape from something like that. That's crazy. Yeah, well, it's locked up tight now. I hope you put two in the back of his head. So Trudy's got some kind of It's not very nice. Snipers. Shoot the barrel, idiot. We're shooting the air. Oh. Oh, and he can't even refill the ammo for it. Yeah, I definitely made a big mistake taking this piece of crap with me. Uh, I think the I think the snipers are using carbines. Great, another one. There we go.
Yeah. There we go. Thanks, Beth. Whew. All right. Back in business. Nothing to worry about. It's a minor misstep. Need to get to the radar tower. Oh, what is that? Is that just a light source or is that a chronom thing? Okay. Next stop, the radar tower. Okay, I think that just may be a a random light. Oh, light in the sky. Um, okay, that's an assault rifle. Don't want that. Some regular run of the mill SMGs. Not interested. Alright. To the radio tower then. Where's the beef? The elevator inside will take you down. Oh, seriously? What is this, a Bond villain layer? You have no idea. Just don't fall into the shark tank. <laughs> oh. Fuck. What's that? Time just freeze over? What was that? Or is that just the stutter? Dead ass stutter? Uh, it's this. Hello, oh, radio show. Falling. Okay then. Hmm. Okay. So I I have to. Okay. I have to first use my time vision to locate the Chronon source. If I don't do it, it's gonna be invisible. Okay. Some something to keep in mind, I guess. Uh, how many do I have now? Four. Okay. <clears throat> Alright. Let's get back to it. Personally, this marks the end of a 17-year journey, and today we emerge from the shadows. We do so accepting great responsibility. I present to you the CFR, the Cronon Field Regulator. This device has been at the heart of our Cronon research since 2010, but I am here to assure you that it is so much more than just that. This device will be our salvation, and as promised, it is ready. To some of you, this means nothing. To others, everything. Rest assured, you will all know when the time is right. We are entering a volatile age. Great danger is coming our way. It cannot be prevented, but we can be protected. And so tonight is a celebration. A celebration of 
face of darkness. We celebrate because... For some of you, this means nothing. For others, everything. Rest assured, you will all know when the time is right. We are entering a volatile age. Great danger is coming our way. It cannot be prevented, but we can be protected. Uh, so tonight is, is a celebration. Okay. Celebration. He's repeating himself. Darkness. Tonight we celebrate because I promise to you that we are prepared. We are prepared for what comes next. We are prepared to do what is necessary. We are prepared to survive. Thank you. Or, uh, uh, no? Okay, he's not. Uh, I thought he was repeating himself. It sounded like the same words again. Look at him. Not a care in the world. Oh, yeah, speaking of, uh. We should have new diaries, right? Here we go. I ordered the execution of the man who I once considered to be my closest friend. I did what was necessary. In order to proceed. I need to distance myself from my past, my weaknesses. There is a simple truth that I knew Jack would never understand. I spent years trying to find a way to change the course we're on. It can't be altered. The end is coming, and only I can prepare us for it. If Jack ever learned the truth, I can't risk that. I've come too far. There's somebody else opposing me. Somebody on the inside. The sickness is spreading. Visions are becoming more frequent. I'm having increasing difficulty holding on to the present. They need me to be strong. The lifeboat depends on it. I hope to God Dr. Amaral finds a more permanent solution soon. The treatments won't last much longer. Hmm. Uh, all right. You said you'd been to William's workshop before. What brought you there? He sold our family home to finish building the countermeasure. He never told me. When I found out, I was furious. I hadn't talked to the guy for almost three years. He stopped answering the phone. I figured he was deep into drugs, gambling, something bad. Did you discover the truth? I never gave him the chance. I found him outside that workshop oh. and tore right into him. Okay, we've read this. Uh, we've heard this. Uh, okay, we need to complete Act 3, Part 1. Find all intel in Act 3. Uh, okay, the, gray, the, the tiny little gray dot means new content. Uh, complete Act 4, Part 2. Okay, that's a long ways away. Uh, this is new, too. Locate Will's diary in Act Four, Part Two. Okay. Oh, this is just—is this the 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 thing we see on TV, right? July Fourth, Two Thousand and Ten. Beth Wilder. I'm addressing this video to you. Okay, we've seen this. That's all right. October Ninth, Nineteen Hundred Hours. We found it. The second time machine. It's the final proof I needed. Everything she wrote in that notebook came true. I found the final piece of the puzzle. The countermeasure that William built to stop a fracture in time went missing in 2010. It was never seen again. It's clear what that means. It was us who took it. It just hasn't happened yet. We go to the past, get the countermeasure, come back, and we can stop all of this in the present. That's our mission. Even if Jack doesn't know it yet. He's convinced we can go back and simply undo this all. He lit right up when he saw that machine, like time travel is some kind of goddamn magic eraser. He's gonna be in bad shape when he realizes the truth. Maybe even worse than I was. Poor bastard. Guy's okay, stubborn as hell. Did I mention his ingenious plan to kidnap Dr. Amaral? Let's just say he's in handcuffs right now, waiting for me to Trojan horse his ass out of a high-security monarch facility. He's got balls. I'll give him that much. Maybe I'll wait a bit longer. Make him sweat a bit. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah. Kind of, kind of knew that this is how it's going to turn out. 
We're going to go back to 2010 and take the thingamajig. And then Beth, Beth is going to warn Will. 2010 Will. She's going to warn him about what's going to happen. Closed loop. All that good stuff. Uh, wasn't there something else here? No? Okay. I guess not. Alright. Here we go. Beth, I'm about to take the elevator. Is he Paul still fond of his own voice? Yeah, he's talking about his survival plan. Crowd's eating it up. Alright, we're going to do the main floor or maintenance? No, we're going to maintenance. What am I supposed to do? I could just do that. Uh. Yo. Well, well, well. What do we have here? Hey. Eh? Little shits. One more for good measure. Huh? Not so fun now, is it? When the shoe's on the other foot. Yeah. Didn't think so. I'll take that. Eleven on the second floor. Okay, here we go. Yo. Oh, how's it going, fellas? No, don't do that. Little fucker. You little cunt. Eh, eh, eh. Suck on that. It was some kind of surveillance drone. Knowing that Monarch had eyes in the sky made me a little uneasy. Hmm. Oh, okay. Well, you can grab this, I guess. There we go. 
just two more to go. Oh, do we have enough for... Oh, no. Okay. Just one more. So what was back here? Oh, this is just another way to the... Same area. Uh oh. What is that? Oh no. No 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 no. It's like I'm Don't make me lose my powers. Chrono dampeners take away your time powers. Disable them or leave their area of effect to regain your powers. Disable them. Okay. Well I have to find the source, don't I? Uh, from Paul Serene to Lifeboat Maintenance. Greetings, Lifeboat personnel. The day has finally come to commence phase three of our plan. Tonight, I will be hosting a gala to celebrate this momental achievement. Monumental achievement, to which you are all invited. By now, you have likely heard of the events that took place earlier today at Riverport University. Our path forward has not been impacted by this minor setback. We are ready for what comes next. Your part in this journey has not yet begun. But the onset of the fracture will bring with it new challenges that are worth reiterating. I'm not able to go over many of these issues in detail at tonight's gala because many guests will not have knowledge of the lifeboat protocol. As such, I'm including a high-level document outlining key points worth addressing. 1. The path forward, our journey ahead. 2. Lifeboat protocol, status of the survival program. 3. Shifters, dangers awaiting us at the end of time. 4. R&D tour, our future at work. 1. The Path Forward When you were first chosen for the Lifeboat Protocol, you were sent a package illustrating in great detail several events that would come to pass. It was stressed that these events were unavoidable. Many of you were reluctant to believe this, but every single one of those events has since occurred, including, to our great regret, the onset of the fracture. This provides empirical evidence of my knowledge and understanding of the future, and I trust it has dispelled your doubts. No future event that I have experienced can ever be prevented. This includes the end of time. It cannot be avoided. However, it can be survived. Survival in the end of time has been the primary mission of Monarch Solutions since its inception. Your loyalty to this cause will prove invaluable as we move forward. I know this isn't easy, but in the face of immutable facts, sacrifices must be made in the name of our survival. From this point forward, we will have to start making those sacrifices at a rapid pace. While we do not... While we do know the exact date and time at which the complete end of time will occur, our knowledge about the escalation and stutters and time anomalies leading to it is far less complete. We do, however, know that it will be dangerous. For the first time in 17 years, we are entering a phase of the relative unknown. Adjustments will need to be made along the way, both in response to the effects of the fracture's progress and to the less cosmic events that we will find ourselves in. We ask for your patience in this trying time. Two, Lifeboat Protocol. You are the chosen few who will survive the end of time. When time stops, your journey will continue in the safety of the lifeboat. The Chronon Particle Harvesting Operation is nearing completion. The lifeboat has been confirmed to be able to run solely on that Chronon power, as regulated by the Chronon Field Regulator. Current data indicates that the lifeboat will remain sustainable for approximately 50 years. Subjective years, of course, as no time at all will pass outside the lifeboat. Given the preliminary research we have achieved using the CF CF CFR, we estimate that it will take at least two subjective decades for the lifeboat team to discover a permanent solution for the end of time. Given the nature of the problem, this is of course highly speculative, and the solution could prove to be more elusive than we're hoping. However, by the time the lifeboat particle is activated, we are confident that we will be able to increase our chronon particle reserves and their sustainability to a point where we have a runtime of upwards of 200 subjective years. Or, to put it another way, if there is a solution to the end of time, I am 100% confident that the lifeboat team will have the necessary time to discover it. 3. Shifters We briefed you all on the dangers of chronon disrupted wave function subjects, or what we now are or what are now being referred to as shifters. We estimate that they will begin to emerge within stutters only as the end of time nears. The lifeboat has been 
tested, and we can say with absolute certainty that the Sutter proof technology will protect the life bud from shifters. Using a, li using a living sample in Dr. Kim's lab, we have proven that shifters cannot manifest without the presence of a Sutter. We'll make sure they are transported to the safety of the lifeboat before they arrive. Floor 3 of the lifeboat has been built to house the Monarch Solutions Striker and Juggernaut squads, a paramilitary unit trained to combat shifters at the end of time. Their presence will likely not concern you, however, in the event that travel outside the safety of the lifeboat proves to be necessary for any reason, the striker teams have been trained to navigate the end of time and successfully eliminate shifters. 4. R&D Tour Tonight we will be sending you VIP passes for the Gala, which will permit entry into our high-security R&D facility on Gal Island. Many of you are, of course, already intimately familiar with these areas, given your technological and scientific expertise, but those who aren't will undoubtedly find it interesting. You're welcome to join a tour to view the various pieces of tech that Monarch has developed during Phase 2 to prepare for our journey forward. We welcome you to take this opportunity to see for yourself that every development necessary for the LiPo protocol is completely on schedule. Your dedication to our cause will assure our survival. Dark times are coming, but you are the light of... You are the light at the end of the tunnel. You are humanity's salvation and hope. Together, we will survive. Pause or in. <clears throat> Shifter presentation. Chronon disrupted wave function subjects, aka shifters. Key attributes. Theorized to exist in a state of quantum superposition. superposition. Surrounded by a highly dangerous distortion field. Highly resistant to injury. Conventional weapons useless. Populate the end of time. Can exist only in zero state. Inside stutters. Appearances likely only fracture progresses. As a result, shifters cannot enter stutter-proofed areas. Procedures. Keep your distance. If not aggressive, do not provoke. Avoid confrontation. Seek cover inside stutter-proofing. Maintain stutter-proofing at all costs. If forced to engage, assemble superior numbers with chronon tech weapons. No heroics. Oh, here we go. The device drained my powers. We refer to it as a chronon dampener. We. Were you talking? Say something? Hmm. What you say? Serene ordered Hatch to kill me because he didn't want to put his plan at risk. And seeing the scale of that facility, I started realizing just how deep that plan went. It made me wonder. Time was ending. What was it all for? Okay, I gotta get to Dr. Animal's office. The alarm would trigger as soon as the stutter broke. I was on board with time. Look at all the stuff that we can't get to yet. <sighs> Interesting. Doctor Amaral's office. It's like that's one level up. He said that one level up ago. The chart showed that all of Monarch's major technological advancements started in 2010. Around the same time that something else happened. Ground Zero. We deliver success in time. Aha. Uh -huh. Finally. All right. Now we can do this. Hmm. 
Hey guys. Thank you. Just quickly grab some ammo here, thank you. I'm sure you guys don't mind. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh dear. That can't be good. Are you dead yet or please die? Are you dead? Hello? Okay. Well, let's hope so. Which way is Amon's office? I think it's uh one floor up from here. I can't be sure, but I think that's the case. These things were designed by walking tanks. They weren't for you. Don't flatter yourself. Well, they might not. They might have. But they might not have been for me. But they were used against me. So it's pretty much the same thing. Okay. Prophecy is one floor above us, so let's find our way to it. Oh, hello. Hello, you. Stop right there. Okay, you can go now. <gasps> there we go. Is that good? Oh. Uh. Oh. Okay. Do that and then. Okay. Uh. Jump across, I guess. Mm hmm. Yeah. Guessing this isn't the usual employee route. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh. It's all this. I knew that Monarch had technology to let their soldiers move in stutters. But this was bigger than that. Somehow, time flowed normally in that area. Suddenly, Monarch's lack of concern about time stopping made a hell of a lot more sense. Okay. Dr. Amaral's office. 
This must be close. Hmm. <laughs> Guns made to operate in a stutter. Paul had clear priorities. The time ends, guns don't. Mm -hmm. Oh! I'll take that. It was technology that allowed people to move inside a stutter. But too heavy to carry, I assume. That's why I had to find the lighter model in Amaral's office. I knew I couldn't leave the offices before locating Dr. Amaral. Okay, all right. Fair enough. Can't shoot him. It's a shame. What do we got here? From Sophia Amaral to Monarch Team Leads, the Time Machine. Hello, I have just been informed that the Time Machine core we obtained from the university has reached Monarch HQ safely and is currently being installed into the new Time Machine corridor system we have constructed there. As you know, the core of the time machine is the time machine. The corridor around it, around it is merely the user interface. This means, of course, that once the installation work is complete, we have effectively moved the time machine from the university into the Monarch HQ. That said, we don't intend to use it. Let me repeat that. There are no current plans to use the machine. We are not sure how safe it would be f to use, given that its initial activation has caused the fracture. I personally believe that now that the core has been activated, further use would be safe. But make no mistake, this is a hypothesis, not a proven fact. We know that the machine taps into the universal Meyer Joyce field, and somehow that connection has caused a fracture in the field, apparently because of a misconfiguration. We are looking into the specifics, but until we know for sure, it will be irresponsible to use the machine. However, having it in place gives us a degree of control. It allows us, in an emergency, to travel backwards, although we obviously can go no further than, that to, than to the time of the activation last night. Or forwards as might be required. Obviously, being fully secured at our building's restricted area on the top floor also means that nobody else can use the time machine. I have to reiterate that the only person who may authorize the use of the time machine is Paul Serene. I do not have the authority. Martin Hatch does not have that authority. The only person who does is Mr. Serene. He takes this issue very seriously, and I strongly suggest that you do the same. Okay. No time travel allowed. Got it. What else do we have here? Brenner's mug. Check out Burke's contacts. Who's he working with? Okay, that's an intel object. Okay. Uh. <clears throat> From Charlie Wincott to Fiona Miller. So I had a dream about you last night. It wasn't anything bad, don't worry, but it was pretty fucking weird. Let's just say that if you have a second mouth hidden under your arm that keeps on insisting that the international stock market is being controlled by the Pittsburgh Steelers, this would be a real good real good time to tell me. I mean, I don't usually have premonitions or anything. I don't believe in that crap, but just the same. I'd hate for that one to turn out to be true. Oh, and also, that mouth eats nothing but sausages. Real chompy chomp style. So, you know, there's probably nothing Freudian happening there. Just wanted you to know. What are you up to, Charlie? Jesus, Charlie, I can tell you're a man of great sophistication. Did you major in smooth talk, or...? Actually, hey, speaking of education, I heard rumors about that op coming up at the university. I know I know you know, because you always know about that sort of stuff. It sounds pretty serious. What the hell is all that about? Well, as far as the university of things goes, uh, can't really talk about that. I mean, yeah, obviously, yeah, I know. I'm, like, the first person they talk to about something like that. But it's classified. I sure as hell wouldn't put that down in an email, so maybe you could... Maybe you should just... Come down and talk to me, you know, if I was free to talk about it, which I'm um, obviously not. Bring food. Seriously, I can't talk about it. I don't even want to know how you know about it, but you should still bring me food, not sausages. Don't make this weird, Charlie. 
Okay. All right. Uh, let's go upstairs. Gull Island Monarch Notice Board. Friday Social. Do not use the rad radar tower entrance as a smoking area. Corona and Tex wanted. Please return all used cups to the kitchen. Return your cups so nobody has to die. Okay. You know, typical office stuff. Sure. From Martin Hatch to Clarice Agawa. Must move forward. I've aided in Jack Joyce's escape from his cell. He is here to kidnap Dr. Sophia Amaral. This presents the perfect opportunity to move forward with our agenda. Tonight we send Monarch into a state of chaos. Tonight we ensure Paul Serene's downfall. When Paul hears about Jack's escape, he will order Sophia Amaral to be locked away in the villa for protection. As Jack nears her location, have Stetson... Sabotage the drone surveillance so that his movements will remain undetected. Assist Joyce's mission in any covert manner possible. Sophia is Paul's only resource capable of developing the treatments he needs. With her out of the picture, we only need to destroy his remaining treatments to render Paul helpless as his sickness grows. All of his treatments are kept in Dr. Kim's lab. I will gain access to the area and ensure that the entire lab is destroyed. I predict that Paul's sickness will take hold within six hours of these events, spurred by the increasingly frequent stutters. Only then we will make our final move. Oh dear. That doesn't sound good. Oops. Uh. From Fiona Miller to Beth Wilder. I just got word that Jack Joyce is in Mana custody, walked right into the mansion on Gull Island and gave himself up. What the hell are you two up to? If you want my help from the inside, then I need to know what's going on. Fiona. Yeah, oops. I'm sure you noticed that things didn't go exactly according to plan at Ground Zero. Seems like a running theme tonight. Can't go into details now, but we found something that I believe is the key to retrieving the countermeasure. The solution is in sight, but we need to kidnap Sophia Amaral in order to get it to work. Jack gave, Jack gave himself up as part of, our, of a plan to get him inside. I'm on my way to release him so, we can, so he can get to Amaral, a poor man's Trojan horse. Desperate times, desperate measures. What's your status? Any updates on the Dr. Kim lead? We may need your help from inside to pull this off. Any chance you can lower security in and around the R&D facility? Our plans might actually overlap for once. I'm going to attempt to access Dr. Kim's lab tonight during the gala to find out if he knew about the countermeasure. I still think that's our strongest lead. However, if I get inside, I should be able to shut down some of the security measures from inside. Problem is that getting inside the lab might prove to be a long shot. Couldn't get a hold of Amaral's keycard, so I've resorted to shameless flirting in order to find a means in. I'm going to the gala as Charlie Wincott's date in hopes that he can get me inside. That is, if I can hold back from punching out the douche for that long. Consider this a test of restraint. I know you think Jack is the key to obtaining the countermeasure, but the evidence is really stacking up that Dr. Kim knew something about the device. All of the research he did in that lab is classified. They're hiding something big in there. I'll let you know what I find. I'd warn you that your plan on the island sounds reckless, but I'm pretty sure you're fully aware. Keep in mind that the minute Dr. Amaral goes missing, the entirety of Monarch is going to be hunting you down. She's the only thing keeping Serene alive. He won't let her go without a fight. Keep safe. Excuse me. From Martin Hatch to Monarch Security Team Leads. People, it seems we are having an even, even busier day than we anticipated. Be aware that both Liam Burke and Jack Joyce are now being held in the detention center at the island. It should go without saying that Burke no longer has any authority within Monarch Solutions and should be treated as any other detainee. Both Burke and Joyce are not considered... Exceptionally dangerous, and Joyce particularly so. He's chronon active and should be handled with caution. That said, Joyce has given himself up. It's possible that he has realized the futility of his position and the fight has simply gone out of him, but I'm not convinced he has no ulterior motive. Mr. Serene has to concentrate on his speech tonight. It's extremely important 
to the future of this company. So please ensure that everything goes smoothly. In the meantime, I will, put, I will personally be conducting an interrogation of Joyce. Please expect my, uh, my arrival at the detention center so shortly. Martin Hatch. Is this her office? From Martin Hatch to Marak Team Leads. Greetings. It has been brought to my attention that there is some confusion as to the reason for the upcoming gala on Gala Island. I understand that some feel that such a celebration is frivolous, even misguided, in the aftermath of last night's events at Riverport University and the now present, steadily advanced fracture in time. These concerns are understandable, but they are missing the bigger picture. Monarch Solutions is now entering a phase in which its true purpose will be fulfilled. We have finally arrived at the moment for which we have spent years preparing. The purpose of this event is twofold. First of all, for those selected to be a part of the Lifeboat project as scientists, technicians, support personnel, or in some other role, it will be important to see and hear Paul Serene. Continued confidence in the survival program is vital for the continued survival of Monarch, and ultimately the human race itself. This is particularly important given recent events. We need to present a desirable and reassuring counterpoint to the sacrifices we've had to make. Naturally, not everybody at the party will be among the chosen few, so a certain degree of inf informational hygiene will be required. I trust you will ensure that those reporting to you are informed precisely to the degree necessary. Secondly, for all of our autonomy and vested resources, Monarch is not functionally independent from the rest of society. In order for our plans to succeed, we will need the support and cooperation of the authorities and numerous business partners. Even though they don't know our true goals, a demonstration of power and confidence, as well as certain Judicious investments of currency and influence will go a long way towards securing that support. Our PR blitz has been working well, but in order to maintain momentum, we must maintain an amicable relationship with Revoport's leadership. Our entire approach is based on the idea of monarchs stepping in to assist the authorities and being welcomed by citizens and city administration alike. Should the latter suddenly declare monarchs help unwanted or unsanctioned, our entire strategy could collapse in just a few hours. That would be disastrous for our plans. In conclusion, this is a tremendously important event for the future of Monarch Solutions, and for the future itself. If there are any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Martin Hatch. Okay. And that's it. Alright, here we go. That's Emma's office. Nobody home. Yeah, Amaral had tried to warn Paul. The end of time was approaching quickly, less than 24 hours away. Mr. Serene believed it would take years to run its course. Admittedly, he was wrong. Hmm, 2013. From Paul Serene to Sophia Amaral, Dream Journal 1. Sophia, as promised in our latest session, I am now going to transcribe what I recall from my dreams. I still have doubts that this exercise will help alleviate my symptoms, but I'm willing to explore the idea further if you truly believe in its merit. For someone who is not a medical doctor, let alone a mental health professional, you seem to take a great interest in my thoughts, not that I don't appreciate it. Here is my first attempt. I recall a haunting image of seven red doors. Each door had a wrought iron handle that was dripping liquid metal onto the ground, creating a pool in the middle of the room. I looked down into the aqueous, metallic glow at my feet to see my own glimmering reflection, re revealing that I had aged half a lifetime. Startled, I looked back to up to discover that only one door remained. Jack Joyce stood in front of it. The heat in the room was overwhelming. Jack was sweating profusely, his skin red and peeling, peeling open. He begged me to take him back home, but there was no door leading home. I opened the only door left and entered, discovering that we were back in the same room we had just exited. He refused to come to terms with this and opened the door again. I followed him, over and over, as he desperately opened the doors, forever leading back forever leading us back to where we started. The heat grew and he howled in pain, beginning to know why... I made the other doors disappear. Why there were, why there was only one path. He begged me to bring the other doors back. He begged me to take him home. The iron pool burst into flames. Jack screamed in agony. I grabbed him, told him what, that we needed to learn to endure the heat, to embrace the flame. I knew it would come to pass eventually, 
but the only way to survive it was to accept its inevitability. My b body began swaying rapidly, dancing to the movement of the flames around me until my bones faded out of existence and I surrendered to the fire until we were one and the same. I was no longer one being in one place and time. My life force spread evenly across the flames until I was no longer an individual in one body, but a grander shifting entity. I could feel Jack being consumed within my essence. I felt a power within the heat, a clarity of intent. I forgot about my desire to ever return from the flames, because the body that once desired to return was lost forever. I became the very thing I, that I entered. It became, and it became me. A cyclical fury chasing itself. Ouroboros. I woke up in a cold sweat. I quickly wrote down words that poisoned my minds in that moment. Delmore Schwartz was right. Time is the fire. With Jack Joyce in our custody, I thought it relevant to forward you a message you sent me years ago. Do not underestimate the significance he holds in your life. I understand your concern that he is reluctant to accept the inevitability of what is coming. However, when he sees the whole picture, he'll have no choice but to believe. We all had our doubts once. You showed us the light. Give him time. I say it. Just say. Projected fracture progression. We've looked at the preliminary data on the frequency and severity of the setters and crunched the numbers, and the results are alarming. Our original projection, which gave us years until the fracture reached the point where time breaks down completely, does not match up with the progression of stutters we are experiencing. Put simply, the stutters are happening more and more frequently, clearly indicating that the Meyer Joyce field is breaking down much faster than we thought. Taking the rate of acceleration, we can hypothesize that we might have as little as 24 hours until we reach the end of time, or the point at which time stops and no longer starts up again. We do not know why the original projection was wrong and why that data, which we do consider reliable, coming as it does from Mr. Serene, seems to entirely contradict our current findings. Regardless, the main issue seems clear. In order to achieve Monarch Solutions' stated goals, the lifeboat protocol should be activated ASAP. <sighs> CFR Briefing by Dr. Sophia Amaral It's no exaggeration to say that the Chronon Field Regulator, or the CFR, is at the heart of all of Monarch's technological advances. It has taken on a somewhat mythical quality, given its origins of the vital role it plays in the lifeboat project, but in actuality, the CFR's applications are very practical. That's not to say the CFR hasn't had a course-altering impact on the work Monarch Solutions does. It's been hugely influential in the development of both the setter-proofing technology that allows us to shield large areas from the effects of a zero state, enabling time to keep flowing within them even as it stops everywhere else, as well as the smaller personalized application of the same technology, the portable coronon harnesses that allow our soldiers and technicians to oper operate freely within stutters. We think of Dr. Henry Kim as the father of all this technology, and deservedly so, but for all of, the, for all of his brilliance, it was his dedication to uncovering the secrets of the CFR that allowed him to make his breakthroughs. Despite Dr. Kim's hard work, the CFR's functionality is still not only is still not fully understood, and we have not been able to replicate the device. Having more than one of them would obviously be greatly adv advantageous to us, but we find ourselves in a precarious position where, in order to fully investigate it, we would have to take it apart. Given its immense power, such an undertaking would pose obvious risks. Perhaps even more importantly, there is no guarantee that we would be able to put it back together again, given that it's vital to the implementation of the lifebulb protocol. It's our policy to leave it intact. We do know, however, that the CFR can not only store an immense amount of chronon particles, it can also tap into the Meyer Joyce field and, with great precision, manipulate it. It's this unique ability that our own chronon technology replicates, albeit at far less control and efficiency. It's also what makes the lifeboat protocol a reality. By itself, our setup proofing technology is powerful and reliable, but its rate of t chronon particle consumption is high, and it increases at an alarming rate as we widen the volume of space and... Uh, as we widen the volume of space the setter proofing covers. This would, on the face of it, make the setter proofing a very temporary solution indeed, one that could perhaps buy some subjective weeks once we enter a permanent zero state, but which would ultimately only delay the inevitable. However, the CFR changes all of that. When the permanent setter proofing installed on the lifeboat, indeed, the very setter proofing that makes the lifeboat the lifeboat in the first place, is directed by the CFR, our, the system becomes vastly more efficient. Our chronon particle consumption is reduced at around 1% of what it would otherwise be. Given that chronon particles are hard to source, even at our ground zero installation and our suck pods are decidedly limited, 
This means that the CFR makes the difference between life bulb being a temporary stopgap stop, stop gap solution or a very long-term undertaking that, hopefully, allows us to eventually find a solution to the end of time. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, Cronon disrupted wave function subjects, a.k.a. shifters. Much of what we know about the shifters is theoretical. Based on observations made by Mr. Serene and the limited experimentation we have been able to conduct on the only subject we have managed to capture, they do not seem to have a stable physical presence. Rather, the data we are gathering appears to be fragmented and contradictory, as if there were countless versions of the subject occupying the same space. Our current theory is that they somehow exist in a persistent state of quantum superposition, or, to put it another way, with reference to the famous Schrodinger's cat, thought experiment. Oh, or to put it Another way, with reference to the famous Schrodinger's cat thought experiment, the cat is both alive and dead at the same time. The full mechanics and implications of this, of this exceed our current understanding, but on a practical level, it seems to make them highly resistant to injury. It appears that even if the shifter encounters deadly force, it may kill one of its aspects, but because it exists as multiple iterations of itself, including iterations that were not killed by the force, it does not stop. Current theory suggests that the only way to stop a shifter is to cause its wave function to collapse from the superposition to a single eigen state. Eigen state? In, the, in practical terms, the shifter must be affected with deadly force enough times for it to run out, of, run out of healthy versions of itself. As such, direct confrontation with the shifter should be a last resort. Contact with the shifter is extremely dangerous. We know that they uh, are essentially mobile repositories of vast amounts of chronon particles, and that they can only exist in a zero state, an area which has been depleted of chronon particles, typically by a fault in the Meyer-Joyce field that encompasses the universe. Colloquially, we refer to these as stutters in time. We also know that shifters are hostile to any source of chronon particles from... We... We also know that shifters are hostile to any source of chronon particles other than themselves within stutters. So any chronon active individual within a stutter may find themselves targeted by shifters. It appears that movement in, movement in stutters, by which we mean the very movement of particles within the space in which time flows, not merely the mo movement of an, in, uh, of an individual, disturbs them, and they respond with considerable aggression. As discussed previously, shifters are extremely resistant to damage. They are also quite physically formidable. But their biggest threat is the distortion field around them. Its exact nature is unknown, but we know it wraps, warps the properties of the space surrounding them, exerting great physical stress and unpredictable forces on its surroundings. Again, in practical terms, close proximity to a shifter may be fatal even if no actual physical contact takes place. Oh. The stutter-proofing technology Monarch Solutions has advanced offers solid protection against shifters. Time flows normally within a stutter-proofed area, so shifters simply cannot exist within them. Therefore, as long as stutter-proofing remains active, shifters are not a problem. However, stutter-proofing of large outside areas is not feasible, like, given our chronon particle budget. So we have developed other technology to defend against shifters, the chronon dampeners. A chronon dampener works by annihilating free-floating chronon particles within a specified area. As shifters' forms are hypersaturated with chronon particles, they cannot enter an area in which a chronon dampener is active without their wave function collapsing. Therefore, our operatives in the field have a solid portable defense against shifters. Our own technology is shielded against the dampener's effect, so activities and stutters undertaken by our strikers and other operatives are not hindered. However, as an unfortunate side effect, the dampeners have a crippling effect on in individuals who are chronon active without the aid of technology. Accordingly, should Mr. Serene be, be present, you should always make him aware of your intentions before activating, activating a dampener. You may rest assured that the dampener is not powerful enough to do actual physical harm to Mr. Serene, whose system constantly produces new chronon particles to replace the ones that are lost, but as the dampener's effects are unpleasant and unnervating, in innervating, such an encounter is likely, lead, is likely to lead to an awkward conversation about future career pro prospects. Ah, <sighs> fucking hell. Okay. We did it. Job done. Alright, here we go. That there looks like what Beth wanted. Oh, shit. Emerald's at the part. The stutter won't last. I better find a way out of here and get to the party. Cool party. 
All right. Let's get back to it. Quite expensive piece of tech you stole. Bill me. I knew Beth's cover wouldn't last long. I had to get it to her at the party before it was too late. Yeah. Oh, more f frozen stuff. <sighs> All right, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back, and uh, now that we start a new new part, I think that means we've unlocked some new content, like. Jack Diary number five. Here we go. You gave yourself up at the party. Paul Serene responded by ordering your execution, yet here you are. Here I am. How did you escape that cell? You work under Martin Hatch. I do? Then you know how I escaped. It made me wonder whose side he was really on. I've done some research on the guy since then. He joined Monarch in 2001. He helped Paul shape the company. There's no record on Martin Hatch before then. Nothing. Like he didn't even exist. It's almost like he came back. I from... think it's time we move on. Uh huh. Yeah. We all know what's going on here. Try to play games with me. Lifeboat presentation. The lifeboat, located underneath Marak HQ, access sealed until until activated, completely stutterproofed. Maintained with chronon particles sourced from ground zero. Particle flow directed by the CFR. Twofold purpose. Guarantee survival of human race. Slash find a way to restart time. Limited capacity. Personnel chosen based on vital skills. Complete discretion required. Note. Mr. S will give the speech tonight at Gala. Groundwork for activation. Mr. H has limited availability. Busy with Joyce. Contact his assistant of urgent. Martin Hatch has an assistant. Who could that be? Kagawa? Uh, time machine has been transported to the HQ. Top floor. Any information would be helpful. Do not require a time machine to activate it in the near future. Technicians on standby. Um... We may not be able to change the past, but my travels have proven anything. It's that the past can help us better prepare for the steps to come. Okay. Oh, dude. Come on, your work. Adventurous religious singles. Pure thrills for the pure of heart. Find your soulmate. Meet the one he meant for you. Abstain together. Enjoy the tension. There is room for all in the closet of the Lord. Okay, then. Guess everybody's got their kink. Not sure the Lord would approve, but Garage. Nah. Sounds like the way out of this place. You do you, man. You do you. Uh there's something in there. No, nothing. Alright. Fair enough. Ooh. Uh oh. Did time resume or? No? Okay. Still good, I think. <clears throat> alright, alright, easy. Damn Hogan. He was making it to the garage. Seems simple enough. Yep. Fucking knew it. All personnel. Jack Joyce has escaped custody and is now present at the RD facility garage. Repeat, Jack Joyce. Get 
Yeah, shut your bitch ass up. Adventures in Flesh by L. Hakola. Chapter Hell? 11. Is somebody playing? An audio book the over the radio? Finally Whoever that is, shut it off. Now. Is dungeon. I think I'll just leave that right there. Somebody find out where that's coming from. This is supposed to be a secure channel. Rest. He was still dressed in his impeccable suit. Alright, well, as much as I'd love to hear more of that. Kind of on a schedule here. Got things to do, places to be, so. I should really get back to it. Okay, not going that way. Uh, this way? Oh! Uh oh. Oh shit. Now what? Okay. Hello to you too. That's what I'm talking about. No. I've learned my lesson. I won't be fooled again. All right. Let's get back to it. Beth, I got that device for you, but Dr. Amaral's at the party. Yeah, I just spotted her. Want to be my date? Yeah, save me that cocktail weenie. I'll make my way there. Serene's finished his speech, and he knows you're loose. He's headed your way. Remember what we said? I'll keep him occupied, but switch to the Monarch frequency to make sure you stay out of his crosshairs. Okay. Out of here, boy. That's the last of them. Try to mess with me. <laughs> Oops. I miss my advanced SMG. If only I could travel back in time so I can not make that mistake of picking up that shitty three round burst fire vector. Perfectly 
lovely audience, and everything's all right in my world. Why don't you give me a call and tell me how things are going in yours? We can... Oh, that was quick. That's our first caller on the line. Hey, caller, you're on the air with Teresa. Hey, Teresa, it's Spencer. Hi, Spencer. What's going on with you? Not much. Cooking spaghetti, listening to you. Just wanted to say hi to my husband, starting his shift at Fire Station 12. Well, let's hope he's listening. Thanks for that, Spencer. Let's go to our next call. Hi, you're on the air. Uh, hey, this is Gail. Nice to hear from you, Gail. What's on your mind? Uh, well, my boyfriend was at the protest last night, and he hasn't come home. Whoops, looks like we lost Gail there. Cell phones, am I right? <laughs> well, let's take a little look at the weather. It's a nice fall evening with clear skies and that lovely crisp autumn air. Why can't be better than that? Just a nice quiet moment we can all enjoy. A lot of queers in this timeline. Not saying there's any, anything wrong with it. Just, just an observation and so. I need the exact coordinates <clears throat> choice ASAP. Monarch Actual is moving into intercept. What is that? This is Home Guard 5. Huh. Just spotted him entering the tunnel system outside the party ground. Beth? I'm on my way. He took out my entire squad. Requesting immediate backup in here. Attention all units. Reroute to the tunnels immediate. Negative. Huh. Again. I'm trying to hear the conversation, man. Still got it. I could see the mansion where the gala was. I had to find a way to get there. <laughs> I could see the energy field of another monarch pulling on damn it. would drain my powers. I'd have to find a way to shut her off. Hmm. <gasps> now how would one my power do that? Within that sphere. I better be careful. Oh dear. It's a big sphere. Somebody get Serene back here. Hello? Anybody home? Right here. Take your swing. All right. Are you taking damage or am I missing or what's going on? Hello? Okay. He's taking damage now. Excuse me? Excuse me. Yeah. Now we're talking. Oh. Not good. Fuck off. All right, that's it. You were headed for the party. What was your plan? 
I needed to get to Dr. Amaral before the stutter ended and Monarch found out I was coming. Hmm. Any, gotta be a way to get past that gate. any juicy little tidbits left behind here? <laughs> Nothing? Doesn't seem like it. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, yes, no. Okay. Uh huh. Oh! I see. So, I. 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 I see. Why can't you just jump on it like a normal human being? Dumbass. Just jump on it. What are you waiting for? What was that? Idiot. Oh my god. Jump. Jump! Jump! Oh, now you know how to jump. What was that? I... What? I... You're... Ah... Oh. Man... Sometimes... It's just... Make things so difficult. This is the this is only the tunnel entrance Joyce, Joyce could have entered through. Enter. Secure the exit. I'm going in alone. Sir, sir, are you sure you don't want support? support? We've seen We've what seen Jack, Jack can do. do. I'm the only I'm one who can stop him. him. If he gets to the mainland, he'll lose him for good. Secure, secure the exit. exit. Hmm. Interesting. Um... What? Okay. Everything is frozen. Beth should be here somewhere. Need to get to her before the stutter ends. Oh, we're still stuttering. Make sure, Make sure everything goes smoothly smooth at the same thing. This wall is below. Make sure Make everything sure goes smoothly at the same thing. You know how important this party is to us. Hope I'm not overstepping my bounds here, sir, but I don't like it. Please take a couple of our guys with you. Locked up or not, Joyce is dangerous. I'm touched by you, must guide the concern. I can handle Jack Joyce. Cocky bastard. But he did give me a chance. Yeah, only to feed his own ends, his own agendas. Serene just finished the speech. I can't take it, he's too much. I swear I could eat that guy up with a spoon. Okay, well that's some, val some valuable intel there. Who's this message by? Okay, just Mr. a... Mr. Serene's huh? speech had been a success. The world was falling apart, but the wine and cheese crowd was enjoying their little goddamn soiree. Yeah, rich people, right? Always dr drinking wine and stuff. Not like everyone else does that. Only rich people do. That's funny, that ain't it? That's funny. That's funny, man. Who that is? Uh, time dodge up to three times in a row. I mean, yeah. Uh, let's do that. We could definitely use a longer range too, so yeah. Okay. Let's get back to it. Uh anything here? No? Okay. Up we go then. She came to the gala dressed in her 
fucking combat gear. Okay. ever been that lucky though Fiona cocktail sword get Charlie drunk, drunk enough to access the lab oh intel object oh is that all the intel objects does that mean I can access a new Paul diary 1999 oh okay September 5th 1999 again I found a way back from the end of time through a second machine I went back as far as it would send me, February 28th, 1999, with a simple goal. To use my knowledge of the past to protect us from the future I witnessed. I've built a company from the ground up, invested in sure bets. We've made millions in mere weeks. And this is just the beginning. I can use this knowledge to do great things. I can use it to guide us to a better future. To make the world a better place. And it's strange. Living all this a second time. Reliving it all from the shadows. I recognized a vagrant the other day. I know how he dies. Weeks from now. I can save him from that fate. A simple start. If I can do that much, then I can save us all. I still see visions of it. Every day, haunting me. Time, frozen. Billions of people just stopped. For an eternity. Never living, and never dead. She followed me here. Tried to kill me. I'd like to think it haunts her, too. Hmm. Who followed her? Interesting. Is it Beth or whoever Beth was talking about? Hmm. Uh, I've heard that, I think. Act 4, Act 4. Act 4, Part 2. Act 4, Part 2. Act 3, Part 2. Oh, that's the one we're on right now. Okay. Act 3, Part 2. Sure. Um, and yeah, Junction 3. Alright then. Let's get back to it. We need to get to Dr. Amaral's office. The stutter could collapse any second. What's yeah. the plan once we grab her? There's a boat dock right outside the mansion. Okay, we can mm -hmm. make that work. <clears throat> Oh god, part two. <laughs> I gotta read this. Hey, Sophia, still haven't got any notes back from you on the first half of my screenplay, but I'm finished the second half now. I'm finished the second half now, so I'll send it your way. Let me know what you think. Time Knife, written by Bruce Livingstone. Act two. Bruce has just had his best friend killed by his boss, Paul Marine. Bruce now has a time knife that sends things through time if he stabs him. He is going to Paul Marine's wedding now to tell his girlfriend, Sophie, not to marry him because he is a real shitty guy. Interior, wedding, building, day. It is a wedding. Paul Marine and his girlfriend, Sophie, are getting married. Sophie is real attractive. Most girls are ham sandwiches. Then she is a 16 ounce steak. Bruce enters the wedding building. Stop! Bruce, I'm so happy that you came. You can't marry Paul Marine. He's a real shitty guy. He's lying! I'm not. He killed my best friend with time bullets. Oh, that's impossible. Time travel doesn't exist yet. That's what they want us to think. But I actually have a knife that is also a time machine and sends people through time when I stab them. I want to believe you, but that doesn't make sense. I'll prove it. Bruce grabs Sophine's mom. 
Here's a bunch of money for lottery tickets. Bruce gives Savine's mom a bunch of money for lottery tickets. He stabs her with a time knife, but gently, not violently, just so that she will travel through time. She disappears. Sophine's mom enters the wedding building. She is now wearing different clothes. He is right. He saw me gently with the time knife, and I was sent to the past. He also gave me a bunch of money, which I used to buy a lottery ticket that I knew would win, and now I have a million dollars. You helped my mom become rich. Thank you, Bruce. You made me rich the first moment I saw you. Rich in my heart. With love. I always loved you most, but Paul Marie and I already just got married. You're too late. Or is he? The minister pulls off his mask. He's actually George Washington. Bruce knew you were getting mad, so he stabbed himself and traveled to the past. Then he stabbed me so that I would be sent to this time. And then I pretended to be a wedding minister for the ceremony. But I'm actually not a minister at all, which means the marriage is unofficial. You did all this for me? Yes, I stabbed George Washington because I love you. Also, the man you were about to marry wasn't actually Paul Marine. Paul Marine takes off his mask. It's Slobo, Bruce's best friend. This is actually a fake wedding. I saved Slobo's life and then had him disguise himself as your boyfriend to make it look like real. But it was actually a test to see if you were meant if we were meant to be. The only thing meant to be is your death. Sophie pulls out a gun. She pulls off her mask. It's the real Paul Marine. But how? I followed you to the past using my town bullets and discovered your plan to marry Sophie. So I already married Sophie in the past. She didn't want to, but I, then I showed her this baby. Paul Marines reveal a baby. I told her that this baby was actually our baby from the future, and that I used time bullets to travel with the baby back to the past to show her that we had a family together in the future. But in reality, it's just a baby as a soul that isn't mine. Then whose baby is it? The real Sophie enters, wearing futuristic pants and a t-shirt. Ours! Are you Sophie from the future? Yes, you're very quick to understand things. I came to the past to tell you that in the future you and I got married. Bruce, we had a very active and highly satisfying sex life which led to the birth of our future child, Uruguay. You're Uruguay? You're that is the baby that Paul Marine is holding. He stole our baby. But why? Paul Marine stole our baby and then traveled to the past so that he could use the baby as a lie to trick younger me to marry him instead of saying that it was actually the baby that he would have with me in the future. The past version of me believed him and because of that I married Paul Marine and said I'm no longer marry, will ever marry you at all. I'm, uh... It's over, Bruce. We're married. Until death do you part. Bruce pulls out the time knife. Paul Marine pulls out his gun at, with time bullets inside. They have the best fight of any movie ever. At the end, Bruce has Paul Marine with a knife to his neck. It's been a slice. Bruce lifts his knife up to cut Paul Marine. You won't give me this easy. Paul Marine aims the gun at himself and shoots himself 30 times. The clip is bigger than a regular pistol. Paul disappears, but then 30 Paul Marines enter. I shot myself 30 times that I was sent to marry... So that I was sent to many different times at the same time, which meant there were 30 of me. Now we're all here to kill you. Which means that each of you has a time bullet inside of you. Of course, but I made sure that we're all shot in areas that have no vital organs and we'll get the bullets removed after we kill you. Unfortunately for you, I traveled to the past earlier and took your gun and added an electric charge on each of your time bullets. I control the electric charges with this handheld detonator. No! Yes, it's quite shocking. Bruce presses his detonator. All 30 Paul Marines are electrified from the inside. Their skin peels open all over like sausages that are left on the barbecue for too long that peel open all over. The Paul Marines all die. Consider this my resignation. Cuckoo gaga! Uh, yeah. God bless America! Bruce and Sophie make out. Sophie waits for a few seconds for the audience to stop applauding before saying her next line. Congratulations, you passed the test. What test? We always believed you were the chosen one, so when we travel to the past to test you and make sure we now believe you are ready to fight the ultimate villain from the future okay who is the ultimate villain his name is paul marine but i just killed paul marine no the paul marine you have known this whole time has actually been an actor from the future that we pay to pay to play paul marine for the test the actual paul marine is exactly the same but he lives in the future he was an actor which means my job was fake as well yes that is the only reason why you were kept in a low-level position for so many years without a single promotion and it appeared that people didn't give you the respect that you clearly deserve because in reality you are the chosen one. It all makes sense now. We must travel to the future. Are, are, we, are we ready? Looks like it's time to find out. Bruce puts on his shades. George Washington waves the American flag. End of movie. Bruce Savage will return in Time Knife 2 The Reckoning. You know what? That's not so bad. I'll watch that. It's better what. It's better than most modern movies. So. Yeah. Oh, shit. Drone. Mm -hmm. What drone? Oh, that drone. Uh. Oh.
Hold on. Let me get this little Camelon first. There we go. All right, all right, I hear you. So this. Yeah. Jack, get a movie before time kicks back in and that drone turns us into paste. All right. Let's get to the doctor. Who sent this drone? Oh. Why is Zarya here? There's nothing to do. Is there a hidden little Camelon here? Okay. Keep it moving. Oh! The fuck? Where did these assholes come from? Are you kidding me? Is that red thing? Is that a turret? Is there a turret there that I'm not seeing? Okay, there we go. <sighs> Should take care of that for now. Oh, there it is. Perfect. All right, what can we upgrade? Can we upgrade range yet? No, we need six. Two more to go. Oh, oops. Okay, two more to go. What about you? You're clear. Go. I can swing by go. and. No, just go. We went to all this trouble. Who's? Beth. 
Shooting. I'm on you to keep her alive. Make my own way out. My plan was simple. There's a bridge to the mainland. Fight my way through anything Monarch would throw at me and steal a car. Drive it back to the swimming pool. Just remember, we need your ass alive for the next part. We'll see how it shakes. No? No, it's not. I can see another one right there. What are you talking about? It's a lot of them. Beth and Dr. M are all clear. It's time for me to get gone. For that, I need wheels. All right. Wheels. Okay. Time to get a ride out of here. Oh, let me guess. The car we saw earlier on is Paul. The big Lamborghini thing LA or parking. Whatever. Beloved by car don't mind if I do. Okay. This thing growing inside me. I've been fighting it for six hard years. Dr. Amaral was developing a cure for the Cronon syndrome. She was the syndrome? only one who could administer the treatment that kept know. my sickness at bay. Cronon syndrome. And Jack? had taken her away from me. How the fuck did this happen, Morton? How is it possible he managed to take her? Paul, this is your illness talking. I'm on your side. Ugh. Ugh. Easy, you They took her. Without Sophia, there's no chance of a cure. We did all we could. But there are forces within Monarch working against you, and I believe Burke was just the tip of the iceberg. It wasn't just Joyce that did this. 
sir. Uh, we've recovered Dr. Amaral's laptop. We have it set up over there if you want to take a look. I'll be right there. I want to go over Sophia's figures. If she's right, the fracture is escalating a lot faster than we anticipated. You know mm -hmm. the future. Dr. Amaral doesn't. Is the lifeboat even in a viable state for activation? She's trying to convince you the schedule's wrong. Why? To get you to rush this? To make a mistake? The people opposing you. She could be one of them. She isn't. Are you willing to bet the entire plan on that? I implore you, hold off on activation, Paul. Let me clean house before this gets completely out of hand. I should have been here. Somebody made a false report. Sent me to the tunnels to divert my attention. Like I said, people walking against you. Who was that on the radio? We're still working on that. Hmm. Do you want to see this laptop or not? Yeah, yeah, alright. Right, right. proceed? Calm down. Oh, shit. Okay. We're at the junction point right away. Um, is there any collectibles? No. Looks like zero. Okay. What's this down here? There's another shiny down here. Let's see. Oh. Any assurance we gave them was taken away the second Jack opened fire. Alright, it's time to make a decision here. Somebody was working against me. Somebody close. Martin Hatch. Sophia Amaral. I could only trust one of them. Okay, what happens if I trust Hatch? Alright, Amaral. Let's go fix the time machine. I said I'll try. Evidence was mounting against Sophia. I couldn't simply ignore it, despite everything we had been through. But she knew you'd never make it without those troubles. But she took them away. If she turned against me with what she knew, the damage could be immeasurable. Hmm. Or... I want him Martin had been my closest advisor for years. I began to wonder if that had been a mistake. Sophia's loyal. She's always been loyal. I don't think we can trust her. The way she looked at the countermeasure like she's seen it before. She knows what it does. Sophia's research had saved my life. Loyalty doesn't run any deeper. Hmm. Seems like that if we trust Hatch, then Jack is going to trust Sophia more. But if we trust Amaral, then they're going to suspect her, uh, they're going to, you know, trust her less. Um, I don't know. I mean, at this... Uh, you know, for this decision, I don't know. Like, I can only suspect what Paul might be thinking. And also, I don't have the same disease that he has, so... Like, I can't really say for certain. I can't really predict how Paul would act. Who he's going to put a blame on. But I feel like I have a hard time believing that he would... Not trust Sophia much. I'm not saying that he would also suspect Hatch, but if it came down to the two, I don't know. I think it's a 50-50, but come on. Knowing what we know, it's kind of hard not to not to not trust Hatch. But yeah, alright, we're going we're going the safe route, see what happens. 
Sophia's data has always been good. I'll trust her judgment. We need to analyze these figures and make final preparations to activate the lifeboat protocol at once. Fine. I'll take the laptop to the science department. No, I think I'll do that myself. I see. Sir? Put people on Mr. Hatch. I want constant eyes on him. Yes, sir. You got it. We pulled some images from the security cameras. We've identified Joyce's accomplice. She's Beth Wilder, one of our mid-level operatives. Her. My God, she's been with us all along. She's working with Jack. Where is she now? Unknown. But we've got a kill team tracking her. No, 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 no. She can't be killed. Not yet. Find her. And whatever Mr. Hatch does, I want to know about it. Don't screw this up. Beth Wilder. It was the first time I'd heard her name. But she had been there in the past. When it all started. Mm. She'd been here the whole time, working against me from the inside. And she wasn't the only one. There you go, sixty percent. Not bad. I need to get in that lab. There's something in there that I need. The lifeboat protocol. Paul's a very dangerous man. And things will only get worse if he continues unchecked. What is it that you're so threatened by, Martin? Do I look threatened to you? This is Dr. Amaral's report. The stutters, they're they're increasing in frequency. What is that? Growing undisrupted life form. Extremely hostile. It's Dr. Kim. Let's go! Let's go! No, 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 Episode 3. Deception. That doesn't sound good. Hmm. What's he up to? What's he gonna do? They managed to radicalize him or... Is he going back to familiar territory? I mean, it's possible if he goes to Hatch and says, yeah, we went in there and we found Dr. Kim, we found him trapped in there and stuff, he's going to kill him because he's just a loose end. That's also possible. Oh, wait. I thought we, I thought we turned subtitles on. Where is, where are the subtitles go? Okay, whatever. What did Burke want? Well, I don't know. I don't even know what the lifeboat protocol is. It's a sanctuary. Designed to shelter a list of Marduk's essential personnel to weather the storm until they can develop a solution. Essential personnel? So that means that I'd be on that list, right? Not under Paul Sawin's view, Jordan. 
He's failed to see the value of his own people. Too consumed with grand ideals and delusions. You know what I find to be the most terrifying notion on this planet? The idea of God. Simply the idea. A being with that much power. The ability to take and give so freely. That kind of control. But you'd be feared, not worshipped. Yet, people believe in it. Just as people believe in Paul Serene. See, what's so scary about God isn't his control, but rather, if he ever lost it, Paul Serene's become unhinged, Charlie. He's triggered a catastrophe. He has the chance to fix it, but he's choosing not to. He's choosing to let things end. Name the time. And this is where we come in. We risk too much leaving the keys to the kingdom in one man's hands. We need insurance. There's something called the CFR. It's a crucial key to our survival and must remain safe. But as long as Paul is the only one with access to it, it isn't. With access to the CFR, I would take over, get Monarch back on track, and once I do, restructuring will be in order, Charlie. Restructuring that will see you as my right hand. I'll be on the list. Absolutely. Then I need to go back to Monarch. And that sort of privilege isolation it can only be done from the inside. That's good. I put the island on lockdown. But the pump house on the west side is an old supply tunnel that runs beneath the bay. No one knows about it. We'll go and see. Time is of the essence, Charlie. You better get to it. <sighs> Commander Davis. Yes, sir. Head to the perimeter lab. We're moving forward. The frequency of the stars is still unpredictable, but they're persistent. Erratic, but persistent. I need certainty. If I initiate the protocol, there's no going back. Mr. Serene, something like this. There is no certainty. We've never dealt with it before. How long? We've been running Dr. Amaral's simulations. It's hard to say without her to confirm, but... Just give me a time. The Joyce Phil could collapse within eight hours. Mr. Suri, if you're going to proceed, now would be the time to decide. Time's ending, just like you said. And the lifeboat protocol, it's a place. They built it to protect people from the fracture. And the only problem is, is, is there's a list and anyone who's not on it is, is pretty much fucked. But if we make it back to the mainland, I, I can get us on the list. All of this entire island is on lockdown. How are we gonna do that, Charlie? There's a tunnel. 
you were lying to me this time, I swear to God. Get off! Tired as shit. I don't know why you're doing this, but I don't have to put your name on shit, motherfucker. What'd you do to him? He's fine. I'm gonna tell you why you're gonna put me on that list. I got a pregnant wife at home, and she's the only thing that I am thinking about right now. So if you get in the way of me protecting her, I swear to fucking God, next time, you will not catch your breath. Lead the way. So is this happening as Jack is in the parking area <clears throat> fighting the bunch of... So the kidnapping didn't happen? No. The kidnapping must have happened already. Yeah? They just never bothered to stop the signal for com from coming in? Okay. Come to free you, my friend. This imprisonment is unsettling. It's time for you to rejoin the others. To return to the infinite. Hmm. Friend. So is he... Hmm. Is he one of the... What are they called? The skippers? Or whatever? Shifters? He went back in time to make sure that the time does end? Or something? How far along is she? Uh -huh. Your wife. Three months. Congratulations. What? I thought Liam had a harness on. Did he take his harness off? Hmm. Liam? 
Um, was that because of the explosion? Oh. That's not good. Uh, okay. Not sure that's... Uh, okay, sure. Are you okay? Yeah. Hey, yeah. I'm good. We need to get... Get on the fucking ground! Hey, ground! No, 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 we're with Monarch! What don't you hey, understand? No, get on the ground! Hey, no, no, no. Hey, I'm the one that called it in. I'm Hatch's guy. One guy. Yeah. Where's she? She's Cronon scientist. She's important. We have to get her back to Monarch right away. Please. Mm -hmm. Get the fuck out of here. Bell! Yeah. He looks familiar, that guy. Why does he look familiar? getting used to it why don't you open your eyes the world is about to end I'm trying to do something yeah you're a real hero fuck you well Davis. Okay then. Davis and his team. They're all good men. Of Monarch's finest. Paul, oh. oh. what about my treatments? I'm afraid so. You know what this means. You don't know for sure. I'm a dead man! You let this happen! Jack. He wants me to become him. He wants me to suffer. Until the end. Joyce and Wilder. But what was troubling me is who got them in the Kim's lab. She paid a visit while well, she was thought to be missing minutes before the explosion. Really? And no cameras picked her up? Paul. 
It's weird, isn't it? Paul, will you, Paul, will you listen to me? Look, it's time you see her for who she really is. This was a party gift. They forced her. She's trying to destroy you. She's Paul. trying to help me. Oh, Jesus, but look at you. The smartest man I know. Blinded by a fool's love. Oh, what are you planning on? Sophia's loyal. She's gotten inside your head. She's always been loyal. You need to think about if this. If the fracture's happening now, I owe this to her. Isn't that the isn't that the cutter measure? Kinda looks like it. Are they running up the lifeboat people? Already? Dr. Holt? What the hell is it? The protocol's been initiated. I need to wake my family. Oh. I'm afraid we have no time. Where you're going, you won't need family. Okay. See you. Okay, a ripple effect just happened, but I don't know what that was. Is it the speech? Liam? Hey, pal. I'm glad you could make it. I was just telling your girl here how concerned about you we've been. Emily. We need to go. Go? What's the rush? We need a doctor here. Ugh. <sighs> 
Emily, give me the keys. <laughs> give me the keys. Get away from me. Get away. Emily, listen. No. Uh, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. This is not who I am. This is not me. I'm telling you, I never felt good doing this. I, I never. I didn't know you killed felt people. Felt oh, my goodness. But it's the only thing I knew how to do. And when I got back, I couldn't, I couldn't find anything. I couldn't find anything to do. And Monarch, they found that useful. And they put me to work. And I swear to God, I couldn't, I couldn't stand, I couldn't stand being alone. So, so every Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I would, I would walk down the street. Because it was the only two nights at the bartender. And she wasn't in school. And I told myself every night to ask you what. It took me a fucking year. And like, if Monarch, if they gave me structure, you gave me purpose. I did this to protect you. I did this to protect us. Our family. I did this to protect our family. And at least you have to listen to me. Something terrible is coming, and I will explain to you on the way, but we have to move. We have to move right now. If you will just let me, if you will just let me protect you on my side. It's Beers. I'm at the perimeter lab. So I have some information about Martin Hatch. I want him apprehended. Immediately. 